Welcome to Tony Unleashed, the podcast where we unleash the truth about all things pets. Our research and anecdotal evidence matched with pet expert interviews will help you help your pet thrive. We are here to answer questions, divulge information, and spread awareness about what's really going on in the world of pets. I am your co-host, Emily Taylor, pet nutrition enthusiast. And I'm Tony Shalaski, owner of Healthy Pet Products with three locations in the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area, and recently expanded to Port Charlotte, Florida. Welcome to the show. On this episode of Tony Unleashed, we're going to talk about today, I don't know if this is the right way to phrase it, we can change it, but pyramid of feeding. Kind of the pyramid of like, yeah. So when you said pyramid of feeding, it made me nervous. Yeah, because then that's more like you should have. Right. Uh, you like, should have X amount of grains, right, X amount of meat, right, X right, amount of bone, phosphorus, no. man, blah, 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 blah. Hierarchy of feeding? So if we're talking about, I usually say categories. Categories, okay. And i that's a common thing yeah. that I talk about with customers that are... It puts things in perspective and it's very entry level. I mean, we're going to make this very entry level for those people who only know about kibble. Yes. And um, talk about there's a lot of different categories and a lot of different ways to feed your dog. There is. And everybody should know the difference between all of them, I feel. Yeah. So when I'm talking with a customer about different categories. Uh Uh-huh. I usually say, are you currently feeding kibble? Do you know the different categories that are available these days? Okay. Because it's it's very different now. Yeah. And then I start to list them mm-hmm. from best to worst. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like, yeah, that's what I sometimes do too. Especially those customers who either just got a new dog and want to switch. Yeah. Or want to switch for other reasons. Right. Or, or getting a new dog getting a new dog having Mm -hmm. issues Mm -hmm. and you're getting into the whole nitty gritty of everything right and i think people are usually shocked that there's so many options so many options and it's it can be overwhelming but Mm -hmm. going into this there's so much play and variety and options like you don't have to find one category and stick to it absolutely not and you can experiment too yes yes and you have to see what your dog does or cat does best on. And what what makes and your life, like what fits your lifestyle. What fits your lifestyle and you ha- we have to be, I mean, what fits your budget. The budget, yeah. I budget. mean, because we want to feed our, our pets the best, but we certainly don't want to compromise the living household standards, yeah. and living the, the lifestyle or be, you know, out on the street or whatever. So, but that point too, I think a lot of, categories that people assume are very very expensive are not as expensive and not as unreasonable as one would assume right i i mean i think as a store we're yeah sometimes known as oh that that place with all the expensive food and that's honestly not the case yeah yeah definitely i mean you know if you do have like a hundred 150 pound dog it's gonna be expensive no matter <laughs> what no matter what <laughs> okay so let's get into it let's see what we have here so i have as first because only because i know a lot of vets really like doing it this way if you do it the right way but it can also be like a very dangerous way to feed is homemade homemade makes me nervous yeah. when when customers come in and say they've been they've been cooking for their dog since the 2007 pet food recall i get yeah. very nervous yeah a lot of the public thinks so you can just feed chicken and rice or beef and rice right, right. or whatever there's a lot more to it mm-hmm. that's uh, not complete and balanced correct and not that a dog or cat would get a complete and balanced meal at every meal that they're fed but over time we have to have a balance of phosphorus and magnesium uh, organs organs bone muscle bone, phosphorus yeah yes so i get very nervous when people say they're home cooking and automatically say are you following a balanced diet that a that a vet a vet or a dietitian has formulated mm-hmm. and sometimes that's a yes and sometimes that's a no mm-hmm. yeah 
I have never tried it because I've never had the time to try it and do the research to home cook. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I mean, you Same. have to buy meat, bones, organs, vitamins, minerals, and all that stuff. Right. It's a lot. Yeah. So the next one we have is, and correct me if you think I'm wrong or you have a different opinion, raw and f- specifically fermented raw. Or not processed raw. Okay, so back up. So yeah. we're saying home cooked is the best category. If you can do it correctly and do a complete and balanced diet. I agree with you. And there's even studies proving that home cooked actually can come above. Yeah, especially if you're doing dark leafy greens, prevention of cancer. Check. You're doing other fruits and vegetables that are good. Check. You're doing a high quality, high well sourced meat. Check great no No synthetics no preservatives no starches no starches no chemicals no vitamin packs on top right yeah i mean you're that's very clean yes uh even gently cooked potentially yes Yes. homemade though so yes i agree that that is the best category and then second would be a fermented raw Mm -hmm. which there's only currently one in existence Mm -hmm. there's one that's in another country Oh, it's they do more fermented fruits or vegetables than meat. Okay. In the food. I was looking at it today, but it could not be delivered to America. No, I would, I would <laughs> so, think that would not be very cost effective. No. So then there's a couple categories of raw that we are talking about. So the fermented and then you have just what would you call it? I have it written down as like unprocessed or just nothing packed meat in bag (laughs) packed meat bone and organs in bag (laughs) i I usually say ground meat bone and organs yeah some add a small percentage five to ten percent of fruits fruits, vegetables vegetables. and botanicals and Mm -hmm. uh so that would be next yep and then third hpp correct High pressure pasteurization. Okay. Which kills bacteria, quote unquote, kills bacteria to make it safer for human handling. Is the umbrella idea for people to HPP for other people's idea that that needs to happen? Would you agree with that? Say that again? (laughs) Would I agree with what? That sentence didn't make sense. Did that sentence make sense? A lot of people like the idea of high pressure pasteurization because they... They feel like it's safer whether it is or isn't. Oh, okay. Bingo. Yes, yeah. you are correct. And a lot of companies will just do their poultry. So their their chickens and their ducks, ducks and their turkeys. turkeys. Yep. And not and they won't high pressure pasteurize anything else. But they basically use cold water in plastic to try to kill bad bacteria. Through pressure. Through pressure. Yeah. yeah. I've been to a high pressure pasteurization plant. So when in where Instinct's plant is, right next to them or very close to them is where they HPP. So when mm-hmm. I toured the plant, they also took us through the HPP process. And human food is done in the HPP manufacturing facility that they use and everything. Like I literally saw like Tyson's chicken and wow. everything in the plant. So... It literally looks like this big vessel Mm -hmm. that a big plastic tube of raw, their raw formula is put into this vessel. Is it wrapped in plastic? It is. Okay. It is. And then sealed Mm -hmm. and then pressure Mm -hmm. explodes. Isostatic pressure chamber is what it's called. And it, it, it pulverizes the cells of the listeria e coli e coli salmonella and salmonella yeah it's three yeah without using heat without using heat Mm -hmm. it is a cold pressure pasteurized Mm -hmm. which many things on the planet are currently cold pressure but some people claim or i've heard that it's not guaranteed it doesn't always kill this bacteria it just dormants it so that it can potentially come and resurface so it's not like but if it's frozen would it resurface i don't know let me keep reading here i don't know 
I guess could could. I mean, can't bacteria grow on thawed out meat? Isn't that why you can't keep it thawed for very long? On thawed out meat. Yeah. But on frozen meat it can't. Yeah, on frozen. But if it once it thaws. Once it's thawed is yeah. where yeah. Well, we don't want to get into like I don't think this is the time to no. get into dogs handling bacteria differently. No, we can stick to the category. I mean, but, you uh, know, it is if you are someone who's worried, like we do get a lot of questions about, well, is my dog going to get E. coli, salmonella, whatever? Am I going to get it from touching this raw meat? You can feel more comfortable if that's the type of person you are who want to feed a raw diet to get an HPP diet. mm -hmm. And you're still feeding a less processed, no heat meal. Correct. So then I threw in this category next, but I feel like looking at it now, hmm. and this is our, our personal hierarchy. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you put gently cooked or air dried next? I guess air dried because it's no heat, but gently cooked is still uh, re- maintains a lot more moisture. Hmm. Uh, that's a tough one. Yeah. Well, let's talk about them both. Do you want to talk about why? gently cooked is like becoming the new thing and um i know your perspective of it with senior dogs so uh, gently cooked i feel like is it is a great category don't get me wrong Mm -hmm. why is it all the rage i really think that it became all the rage i mean the farmer's dog well it existed before covid but i really feel like covid really pushed it to the next level because all the plants were kind of like nope because i feel like during covid we needed to feel comforted and cooked food is comfort food i wonder if and i really feel like that's the psychology behind it yeah i mean that's i really think it got to a different level during covid so home cooked uh i think is a great option if it makes you feel better that you're feeding your dog uh, i don't know that a cat's gonna eat it but my cat does really he steals it the raised right yeah he steals it out of the bowl the dog bowl interesting interesting they make it for i mean nature's logic was saying that they're gently cooked is same formula for cats and dogs huh just like their cans. And yeah, just like their cans and raised right. That was one of the questions I asked raised right is they have a separate one for cats. Okay. So yes, cats, I guess will eat it. <laughs> okay. It's, it's to me, it's, it's fine. We'll talk about senior, talk about senior dogs and cook. So food. I always have been kind of a, I feel like senior dogs do better on cooked food because it's, uh, easier on the system. It's already been co- slightly cooked. So it's easier on their system to digest. Some of the fats are already processed out. We often see dogs later in life and cats later in life that have a little bit of kid- weaker immune system, weaker immune system, kidney disease, mm-hmm. pickiness. Mm-hmm. When that food is slightly cooked, they just love it more. So I think it helps in a lot of ways. To me, it's a lot of unnecessary plastic in the way that most of the companies I've seen package it. It's a lot of plastic. It is. But honestly, how do you... How else would you do it? How else would you do it? Yeah. I mean, I think that because of the amount of moisture in it, if they did a frozen patty it would disintegrate once it thaws or it would like it would be mushy it i think it would get mushy yeah yeah and maybe more quickly form those ice crystals Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah but yes that's definitely not a not a great thing but i don't know how you get past it yeah i tried it my friend had like she used it on her senior dog before her senior dog died of like a different brand and i uh tried one just out of curiosity on Kenny. And then I tried raised right on Kenny. And they're kind of like, they were kind of like the same. You could see more of the vegetables in one versus the other. Uh-huh. But there wasn't anything that was like, I wasn't like super impressed or like, oh, I have to feed this way now. Like it was just like a good thing to throw in rotation. Right. But 
Right. I th- I think that we also need to tell our listeners that we're diehard raw feeders yeah. to a degree. And yeah. the only other cooked one I fed was small batch. We had some samples from small batch. No, that was open farm. No, small batch. Small batch? I promise. Yes. And 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 here's less plastic. They um Wait, I was didn't know this. Yes. They uh do a cooked in the small little medallions. And all of the medallions are in a bag just like the raw. Yeah. They don't do it anymore? They do. Oh shit. We just don't. Did it does it come in lamb? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, they do lamb uh, raw, so I would think that they're going to do... Because do... they do very minimal flavors, and lamb is one of them. It Small batch has a cooked. Yeah. It's okay. We won't dwell on this. <laughs> they all, they're all they all going to have it. They, I know. I, I know. mean, you heard Adam from Raised Right. Like, mm-hmm. they think it's the next category. Do I agree with that? I don't. I agree with it for what you say, like the senior dogs, and maybe even little dogs. Yeah. Maybe even like yeah. the little picky eaters. And I think that's fine. You know, that's why I ask because I have a 14, 13 pound dog and it takes me less time to go through those plastic packets of food, but they last up to six, six days thawed out uh-huh. and you can refreeze it once. So that would make sense. Right. Right. For like even like a five pound dog. But for the dogs in between. I don't know. It's supplemental for bigger dogs. It's, yeah. There's no way. Yeah. I mean, unless you be great for, I guess it would be great for puppies too, to get them used to like, Oh, you don't think so? I'd be, I'd be. So if you fed. Pup, no, not all that, not that. Oh, in conjunction with. To start getting them used to okay. a less processed diet, to okay. add moisture to their licky mat. Like I think people would feel a lot more comfortable with puppies putting like, a gently cooked on a licky mat or like a licky bowl or yeah. like then raw right off the bat. Yeah. Okay. Not solely gently cooked. Okay. Why? What were you going to say? It's expensive. I, it would. No, it would worry me that they wouldn't want anything else. Oh, uh, I guess you, that point would still be valid. Okay. On to the next one. I think we've. <laughs> air dried is the next one. Yes. Air dried. Air dried. I fed, interestingly enough, I fed air dried tonight. I always keep a bag of Zeewee Zee-wee. Peak mm-hmm. because if I forget to grab food on the way home or mm-hmm. if I forget to thaw and I like to keep it kind of incorporated in their diet because when we travel, that's what we use. Would you do carnivore oh. over Zeewee ever? So I love carnivore. Yeah. How <laughs> However, however, okay, so carnivore is baked kibble. It well, bake. it's air dried. It's it's fast, uh, fast, rapid baked very quickly, and then it's air dried. And with the other food we're talking about is Zeewee Peak, which is a New Zealand was a new is a New Zealand based company that just air dries their food. Right. So they're two air dried category foods so let me tell you a story about meg meg was the first dog i ever fed raw food to so it was right after i bought healthy pet products i was Mm -hmm. crazy busy that it was at the point that i was still making raw food or ordering online i didn't have a freezer at the store yet like i had nothing to feed her so i'm like oh she'll be fine i'll take a can of tripe Uh uh-huh I think it was a can of tripe. And I took a small bag of wellness used to make. Uh, They're air dried. things. No, oh. no. God. And this is like almost 20 years ago. Oh, okay. Um, they made a uh, kibble called simple. Okay. So basically like a limited, limited ingredient diet. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, she'll be fine. I, so I gave her. A cup, like a a little bit of kibble and a little bit of the canned. Oh my God, she was so sick. I felt so bad. Really? She she was diarrhea. She had diarrhea. She was throwing up. She was really sick from it. Wow. So, and not that I'm saying that um, the boys would get sick on carnivore or if you were a raw feeder, because we do have customers that feed raw and they travel with carnivore. Mm -hmm. I think I just have a little PTSD from that. So, um, cause sweet pea does really well on it. Does she? I, cause I blend in like a little, 
something just to like, huh? The lamb. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I haven't had any bad, bad God, results. With I, it. I don't know if you realize how much we sell a lot. It is. It, uh, it's great. It's we saw a lot of it. Yeah. And all what I do, like if I'm travel, like if I'm gone and my brother's watching the dogs, I'll just be like, I can live with them having carnivore for like X amount of days. Do they poop more? Do they? Um, They have not been on it just carnivore for long enough for me to know. I've really only been gone so far, like one to two days. OK. <laughs> OK. But bottom line is. We do want to say that we love carnivore. Yes. Yeah. So carnivore is a air dried food that looks like kibble. So it's very convenient. It has zero synthetic vitamins and minerals in it and it's minimally processed. So the way that they get the kibble shape is they literally have to use like a mold. Whereas we'll talk about this later. Other kibbles are extruded. So they're heated in like a tube that shapes them that way. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they do like this, the triangle ones, but um, they have to like a, how you would make. I don't know. What do you bake with and have to. I'm, I'm not a macaroon. I don't know. They, it's like a little mold. Are you talking about the squeezy thing that you push? No, I think they, I think he literally said they have like <laughs> it's a die cut. Yeah. Yeah. It's a die cut like mold thing. Yeah. I don't know what else you use that for because I'm not yeah. like well versed in the kitchen. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Who else has air dried? There's like a Canadian one that we saw at Global. Uh, and then Wellness had one at one point for like the little dogs. I don't know if they still do. Are you talking about that soft and tender or whatever mm-hmm. it was? Mm-hmm. I don't think that would. Did they it call said, that air dried? They called it air dried. Uh, okay. Next category I have is freeze dried. Yes. And this is very, very, very popular. Oh, ridiculously popular. And yeah. it is the most expensive mm-hmm. category mm-hmm. and the most popular and the one growing at the fastest rate. And you need, you have to solely rely on a freeze dryer, which has broken before. Like Stella and Chewy's freeze dryer went down and they weren't able to like get the part. Mm-hmm. Classic COVID. Mm -hmm. So we're taking raw food Mm -hmm. and we're putting it through a freeze dryer Mm -hmm. to make it shelf stable. So it's literally freeze dried raw food. Mm -hmm. So similar to what they used to send people to war with or still Mm -hmm. send people to war with is freeze dried food. And you should go camping with. Yeah. Just add more water. Add water. Yeah. It comes in different forms, like shapes, like you can get like little nuggets, you can get like kind of patties, or you can get like um, the nibbles, nibbles, but you can, what would you call the consistency of like Sojo's? Oh, the powdered. Powdered. I would call that powdered. Powdered. Yeah. So, and some people use freeze dried as a topper. And treats. And treats. Freeze dried treats are the way to go because. Mm -hmm. Or air dried treats. Or air dried treats. Very pure. That's yeah. the way to go. So you're you don't have a lot of you're not using like the carby biscuits, the starchy biscuits. Yep. You have really high palatability because they're meat based and they're clean for the most part. Yep. The next I have is dehydrated. Yes. Oh wait, also freeze dried. They also have freeze dried topped kibble. <laughs> yes. And well, should we incorporate that with baked kibble because most of the freeze dried yeah coated do you think we need to talk talk about the definition of freeze drying there's no heat added no it's just it's like a flash freezing yeah pulls out the moisture yeah to make it shelf stable Mm -hmm. for a really long time um okay then dehydrated so dehydrated we have the honest kitchen Mm -hmm. and it comes in a powder and a kibble it comes in a powder and what they call clusters, mm-hmm. which looks like kibble. So it's basically their dehydrated formula that they have hydrated, mm-hmm. formed, mm-hmm. and I guess dehydrated again. Hmm. I don't remember. But I know that they did a digestibility test on it. Yeah. And it came back like 93, 95, 90%. Right. Digestible. Did I ever tell you about the time we... Took Bo 
camping and I took Honest Kitchen. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know if I was feeding too much or it's just compared just to raw. Pooping like crazy. He literally. Was he like a horse walking and pooping? Yes. I did tell you the story. <laughs> no. I, we felt so bad for him. He literally, because he w- is was always typically in front of us. He literally would be walking down the trail and just poop. He And he wouldn't stop. He would just just, just poop. Oh, my gosh. Would it come out formed? Or yeah. Like oh, it, it was formed. Oh, that's so funny. But he just kept on going and just kept on pooping. Does he have a full tail or does he have like a little nub? Bo has a full tail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Dehydrated, you also have to rehydrate. And dehydrated pretty much only comes in powder, right? Yeah. What other dehydrated? And you honestly, how many dehydrated are there other than Honest Kitchen? Not that I know of. I think it's the only one. Okay. Yeah. And then we have canned, which is. But I thought canned spoiled my dog. I thought canned spoiled my cat. Or or if you feed canned, then your dog or cat's going to have bad teeth. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're being sarcastic. folks. Yeah. So. No, there's some really, really, really incredible canned foods out there. Really high quality. Raruva. Open farm. Well, open farm is more like boxed. It's the Tetra Packs. Tetra Packs. Uh, Zewi Peak, Lotus. Lotus. So most people are shocked to hear that canned food comes before dry. Oh, yeah. It's expensive, though, too. It's an expensive way to feed. It is an expensive way to feed. But it's great to add to or just feed. Definitely. I mean, because it's full of moisture. Yeah. Um, if you get a good quality one, it's mm-hmm. going to be mostly meat based and it's well sourced. It's not spoiling your dog or your cat, no. especially your cat. Your cat yeah. is an obligate carnivore. Yeah. So uh, they need moisture, moisture, moisture. Mm-hmm. And it's nice because canned, you have a lot of variety, especially for cat people whose cats will only have pates or only have shreds or only have morsels or only have stews like it's canned has such a nice variety of textured options. So many options. And ingredients in it mm-hmm. too. I mean, you can go mm-hmm. to like just meat to like a nice meat, veggie, whatever blend, multiple meats in it. I mean, there's so many options, especially for like your sensitive stomach dogs, your allergy dogs. I mean, you're going to definitely find something in the canned food aisle that can like meet those needs. Yeah, you need moisture, mm-hmm. it, and it doesn't cause Mm-mm. bad teeth at all, mm-hmm. at all. And kibble doesn't clean teeth. No. So that leads to our next category: baked, baked kibble. Yes. So baked kibble is baked as if you would bake it in your oven. Mm-hmm. So it crumbles easier. Mm-hmm. The nutrients are more. Ab- more bioavailable it's more nutrition dense because we didn't cook the shit out of it yep so your dog i mean you typically will have more but you pr- your dog probably won't need as much as an extruded kibble because their body can absorb more of it yep probably have a little bit less poop but still poop a decent amount and our baked kibble is lotus cell and chewies is that it there's might be missing one yeah i feel like we're missing uh no, open farm does not bake. Uh uh-uh. uh. Instinct isn't baked. Mm-mm. Champion isn't baked. Mm-mm. Victor, of course, isn't baked. From signature, there might be one or two others that we just don't carry. Yeah. Does Tiki Dog bake? There you go. Bingo. Okay. I did bring the cat into North Hills. Okay. The kibble or the can? The kibble. The kibble. The kibble. Yeah. Uh, and we do have the dog. Yeah. The cans. Small, the no, we have the kibble. That's right. North Hills does. North Hills, and I'm pretty sure cranberry, cranberry. does. So baked is better than extruded. Mm-hmm. So the extrusion process is very high heat. So I have the definition of the extruded. Go for it. The process of extrusion uses high pressure, heat, and pre-mixed dough. Extrusion pushes the dough through a machine that shapes it and cooks it at the same time. 
Once it's cooled, the kibble is then sprayed with a coating of flavor and fat. It is the most efficient, least expensive way to make dog food and has been around since the 1950s. I think before the 50s, but whatever. For a long time. Yeah, a really long time. Uh, so that's extrusion. And I would guess that 97% of all kibble is extruded. Is extruded. Mm-hmm. You know, but you have your you have your better extruded kibbles out there than like yes, is Purina extruded and a high end kibble like um champion or nature's logic extruded? Yeah. Yes. They're both extruded, but they are very different in terms of quality as well. Definitely. And we also have to be realistic on budget. Mm-hmm. And there are there are things that we can do to offset the starch load. Mm-hmm. And so in kibble, there has to be starch. There has to be a binder. We so have- you have to have a sugar. You have to have a starch in order for it to stay in that shape. Just like baking. Yes. Yep. There's no there's no way around it. Yeah. So that's why like when you get out of the kibble, you're not going to have as much starch and sugars in your diet. Yeah. So I also have here to talk about bioavailability in terms of like digestibility, why it's important, what the digestibility rate of, and I think, I think talking about like the percentage of digestibility helps put things into perspective of why maybe a raw or even a gently cooked or a home cooked meal is going to be better for your dog than a kibble. Because the digestibility of a raw is going to be closer to 95%, which means if you give them one cup of raw, 95% of that one cup of raw is going to be absorbed and used in the body for nutrients, for energy, for growth, for development, for maintenance. And then 5% will be eliminated, Mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. When you have a kibble, you're getting closer to what, 60, 70% would you Mm -hmm. say? Yeah. So you're feeding one cup of kibble, only 60, 70% of that is going to be absorbed, used for beneficial purposes. The rest is going to come out and poop. So which is why a dog that's on kibble is going to poop a lot more and be fed a lot more than a dog on raw because they need more of that to fit their nutritional needs. You got it. So... Then it's like, okay, yes, kibble's cheaper, but you're wasting so much through their elimination Mm -hmm. sometimes. And that's just putting, not saying that like you have to feed raw or anything. It's just putting it in perspective of like terms of marketing people pushing kibble, saying that's or better than anything else. Definitely. Yeah. And they sell a lot of kibble. So when we're talking about kibble, let's real quick, because I know we're, Getting closer to 30 minutes. Let's talk about ingredients to absolutely look at and to avoid on the ingredient panel. With kibble, with canned. One of the ones that I really warn people of is an unidentified meat source. So that would usually say animal digest or animal protein or rendered proteins. Or meat byproduct. Or meat byproduct, yeah. So animal byproduct and any unidentified meat source is not good. And the reason why is it could be any animal and that any animal includes euthanized dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. Or roadkill. Roadkill. Yeah. Horses, Mm -hmm. uh, farm animals, Mm -hmm. the four Ds, they call them. Yeah, let's talk about the four D. Dead. Dying. Diseased. Decayed. Decayed. I think is the fourth, yeah. And that means dying from like getting hit by a car ill health yeah yeah i mean that 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 can mean farm animals that are just suffering that they just that no we're not like slaughtered from a commercial animal feed operation right kfo right which do exist and uh a lot of pet food comes from diseased and decaying animals from commercially raised and that's allowed that's legal. Oh, a hundred percent is the problem. Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, for them totally. to do that. Yep. I mean, they're obviously not going to lead with that, <laughs> but they can get away with it for sure. So that is number one, in my opinion, one of the big mm-hmm. red flags. 
Powdered cellulose is a hidden word. So powdered cellulose is basically sawdust. sawdust. And you'll find that in a lot of weight management or hairball formulas. Mm -hmm. Another one? Corn. Corn. I mean, do humans digest corn? I know some. I know like Farmina was putting corn in one of their formulas for the purpose of a sugar spike for energy not, dogs yes, high energy something like that it wasn't it wasn't used for any nutritional value purposes because they know that like corn but they did put it in there for that sugar sugar hmm. spike but essentially i mean corn is is has no nutritional value and even no matter what royal canaan will claim that even if you grind up corn really thin <laughs> or like fine. really small fine thank you it'll it's but it's better for the dog. If it, no, you just can't see him shit it out is the problem when it's all powdered up. Right. It still has no nutritional benefit. It doesn't have any nutritional benefit for us. Right. It's a lot of the times the very first ingredient or the first or second or third ingredient corn is. Yeah. Do you want to do another one or? I have the last two I have are soy and gluten. Or okay. not gluten. I don't guess it's gluten, but soy. Soy? Mm-hmm. Because most of it is genetically modified. Mm-hmm. And so when I started started in the industry, a big one, three big ones were BHA, BHT, and ethoxyquin. Those are all chemical preservatives that are linked to cancer. So you don't see these on ingredient panels nearly as much as you used to. But I don't believe that they're not still in the food some mm-hmm. way, somehow. Because mm-hmm. what a lot of people don't realize is if the food manufacturer doesn't put an ingredient in, they don't have to list it on their package. So in other words, if the meat processing plant preserves with BHA, BHT, or ethoxyquin mm-hmm. and sells it to the meat manufacturer, the meat manufacturer does not have to list it. they didn't it. put it in. Correct. Yeah. That's scary. So, very scary. And that's why that's why it's hard to trust. You can't really trust those big giant corporations who are trying to get cheaper meat and cheaper ingredients. And you want to s- stick to smaller companies where you can trace the protein source. Correct. And you can ask them about that and they'll give you, you know, oh, this. And a lot of the times it's this protein is sourced from here. This protein is sourced from this farm, this protein, because you're not all the same animals are not going to thrive in the same environment. Mm-hmm. And open farm actually has a QR code. You, yeah, you snap that QR code and it tells you where the Turkey came from and, yep. and everything. So. And that's a kibble that is an extruded kibble. It is. It's the only food that we sell that's certified humane, which means it might be the only one on the market, which means those animals are at the top, like have the top notch hair. Care, hair, care. <laughs> and hair probably yeah. because of and the care. Hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have access to outdoors. They're pastured. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lights turned on and off for they're ha- inside. They're happy animals. Yeah. So, which is why they're also expensive. But yeah, it's worth it. Yeah. Anything else? Any other ingredients? I think those are the big ones. Yeah. Flavoring. I mean, that could be a whole episode in and of itself. Yeah. So why don't we leave that as an episode? Okay. So this is just like, yeah, good. I think that was good. I think we were organized. We stayed on topic for the most part. Yeah. Do you want to talk about what we feed our animals and end it on that? Okay. You want to go first? So I feed raw. I have been feeding raw for about 20 years. So what did my dogs eat tonight? Oh, actually, I already said it. DeSoto had Zee Peak tonight. But lately, I've been feeding Vital Essentials rabbits. Vital Essentials is interesting because it's meat, bone, and organ. So That's they it. it's basically like an alpha model, mm-hmm. which the alpha dog would get the best of the kill, which is meat, bone, and organ. And that's the philosophy behind Vital Essentials. So I did just feed that raised right cooked sample. Mm-hmm. And the guy, the boys loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, so they always get something different. That's the main thing. But yeah. I mean, it's, I am going to incorporate more cooked food with Bo. Bo, our dog, is 
13. He turned 13 in January. So he intermittently has had some digestive issues, just random throwing up weirdness. So I do want to incorporate more cooked food into his diet. I've done a lot of milk thistle. I've done a lot of bone broth. I actually completely took raw goat's milk out of his diet and he's doing a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm feeding. I do. I do a lot of different things. Do you do any supplements? Yeah. How many supplements do you do? Uh, right now? Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Uh, joint. I do the joint connectin from Enclover. I do the Optigest from Enclover, which is a prebiotic and digestive enzyme. I've been doing the milk thistle. I started milk thistle because Bo was doing that little bit of throwing up and it was a little bit of bile. When a dog throws up bile, that's an indicator that the liver's under a little bit of stress and the milk thistle can help with that. It definitely has. I also have the Colorado hemp honey with ginger because when he throws up, I give him a little spoonful of it and he feels better. And sometimes he'll like lick the carpet at night. So that usually helps with that. So the bone broth I do to help with the gut and the joints. And that's, yeah, yeah, that's how I got away from the goat's milk is I did the bone broth because we're still, and the Optigest is feeding the gut. I don't know if the milk was just, you know, milk Too much. creates phlegm. Mm -hmm. And inflammation sometimes. Yeah. So I, I never, and this is just personal. And this is just things that are made up in my head. There's no like scientific evidence to any of this. I don't ever recommend goat's milk to bully breeds. I don't do so, it to boxers, French bulldogs, pugs, pit bulls. I remember you telling me that before. Yeah. And you're probably... I just feel like there's, it's very rich mm -hmm. and it's a little too heavy for their systems, which are dogs that are already like prone to a lot of issues. Well, and the, the short snout mm -hmm. and the they already have the whole breathing issue. Right. So it right. makes sense right. that... We want to, that that milk does create phlegm, which is what snots, you know what I mean? Right, like that's right. just, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, nothing is for every dog, no matter how perfect no. of a food it is. Right, right. And you have to know your dog too. So I feed, I have three animals. One, so you have, so we'll say you have cattle dogs. Mm -hmm. So they're nice. high energy very attentive dogs and I have a Staffordshire Terrier a 13 pound mutt and a cat so the pity gets she does best on lamb so we stay on lamb and we do rotate between I don't know she does well on Stella and Chewy and she does well on Primal and I think because I, I tried to do just lamb and I think it's just a little bit too rich and I think she needs some of like the other to dump like non-scientific dumb it down a little bit or like I don't know I don't know how to explain she does really well on it surprisingly she does carnivore too she does tripe she does and a raw egg every day for food and uh, we're making lamb bone broth we're currently making lamb bone broth with those necks mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited about that and then she does the connectin she does green lipped muscle she does cranberry. She does optogia. She does spirulina. She does <laughs> liver tonic, <laughs> CBD. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All those things, all the little powders. Green lips, right? The green lipped muscle, connectin, cranberry. Jesus oh, she does also mushrooms. Christ. Mushrooms. I know, but I get, I'm like, I'm like, she's not living much longer. I got to load it all up now. <laughs> You really should rotate through all of these things. Yeah. And some days I some days I forget the spirulina. <laughs> like I just ran out. Yeah. So like I'm not gonna buy it right away. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kenny gets, gets nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> well, Kenny doesn't he's very picky with his supplements. So Kenny just he wrote he gets a smorgasbord. He'll do we've been doing the raised right. He rotates through raised right answers. Raw dynamic, small batch, and then he gets one full sardine a day, 
and he will get a bilberry eye support because he he has like a weird little eye that really helps with like the leaking. Huh. And then he gets a hip and joint as a little treat. And then I do often am able to get CBD um, oil in him. It's gotten better as he's gotten better. So I'll do a rotate between CBD dog health, Austin and cat's immune support one. And then the cat just kind of gets whatever. <laughs> no. He, baby Sue gets a mixture also of like Ruva. He gets primal nuggets. Uh, he didn't really like small batch. That was kind of a waste. He did not really like raw dynamic. He will do nature's logic. Uh, can't too. So we're just kind of kind of have a smorgasbord in the freezer. Oh, tripe. Did I say Sweepy gets tripe? Yeah. She does get tripe. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny will sometimes get tripe too. Do you want to tell our listeners what tripe is? Oh, love tripe. Tripe is a stomach lining of the animal and you want to get it unbleached or unchemically processed. So you want it to be green. You don't want it to be bleached. And it's great for the immune system. It's super stinky. It has like a very interesting, like chewy texture to it. But Stringy, it's, chewy. Yeah. And it's, um, it smells like barnyard, but it's so- No, it smells like shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's in the barnyard. Yeah. And it's just super high in probiotics, enzymes, gut health, enzymes. enzymes. Yeah. It's the fourth stomach. Mm-hmm. So of, it's only in like beef. Of ruminant animals. Yeah. So venison, beef. Sheep. Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. Those. And that's why, well, we won't go into the whole tripe thing, but that's what tripe is. Mm-hmm. Excellent for dogs. Excellent mm-hmm. for cats. Mm-hmm. Is that a wrap? I think that's a wrap. I think that's a good time. Oh, yeah. Um, we would love to answer your questions. And we would love for you to like give us a topic that you want us to talk about. Mm-hmm. So please, you can actually message us on any of our social media accounts and just reference this podcast. And then we have the email, customer service at healthypetproducts.net. And our website, there's a messaging option on our website as well that you can reach out to us. And that's all run by one person who is here with us in the room during this podcast. And <laughs> this podcast. what would we do without so her? It is guaranteed to get with us, to get to us. <laughs> this information. <Hi. laughs> Soto's getting upset. I know. So, but it would be great if we started getting questions and we could do a whole episode just on questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can even, I mean, even if you're shopping at the store and you think of a question, just tell um, an associate that you're talking to. Yep. And they'll write it down and they'll give us that information. Yep. And I just want to remind everyone that we are here to educate as many humans as we can about how Mm -hmm. important pet food is Mm -hmm. and uh, that we have to be our, the advocates, our, our pets advocates and fight for their health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And we're losing too many to cancer and autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're here. So please give us a five-star rating so that Mm -hmm. we can reach as many people as possible on the planet. We just want to talk to people too. Yeah. And hear people's feedback, what they do, what works for them. Yep. All that stuff. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Till next time.